back everyone. Happy National Bourbon Heritage Month. I can't believe this is it's, it's our month, right? It's the Bourbon Month. It's uh, also not just any other Sunday. We just had the Kentucky Derby yesterday. Shout out to Authentic on winning in the Kentucky Derby. Um, Tis the law. Everyone thought that you were going to win, get the whole triple crown, but unfortunately you did not pull it out. But hey, right? It was a good race nonetheless. It was odd though watching the Kentucky Derby with no fans, right? I mean, there was people obviously in the stadium, but typically obviously just really like the owners and their friends and so forth, but no true, the whole Kentucky Derby experience, right? A little different, but hey, it is what it is. So when you think about bourbon and it being National Bourbon Heritage Month, the one thing that comes to mind with bourbon is not so much just what you're sipping, is who you're sipping it with and who you're spending that time with, right? So for me personally, whenever I'm tipping bourbon, I'm typically either hanging out with cousin Anita, uh, my buddies Brian, Jamal, Roddy, you know, my little crew of guys we hang out with. But uh, I wanted to give a little shout out to um, the folks who watch the channel. And there's a lot of you guys and gals out there. So thank you to all of you for watching the channel. But these are some of the folks who comment a lot. So just a couple of people, BT Hunter, my man Cliff, Jordan Benoit, Caltech, my man K Banks, good guy, Whiskey Tornado, D Brown, Cleveland Kid, always there as well, Steve Owens, Patrick Robleski, Patrick, I'm sorry if I messed up your last name. My apologies in advance. Uh, and I'm going to go a little bit old school with some, some guys that have been with me from the beginning. Halden, really appreciate you, Halden. My man, IV. IV is such a cool guy. We, we talk all the time, actually. He always reaches out to me, questions and stuff, and I really love that, right? And we kind of go back and forth. And then last but not least, Kent Say Bourbon. And my channel, who's been with me from the beginning, my man, Carino. Appreciate you as well. So, And there's a lot more people out there. So I thank you for everyone watching the channel and so forth. Really do appreciate it. So what are we reviewing today, right? We are going to review the newest addition to the Weller family, the Weller Single Barrel. So I just popped this bad boy, just popped the cork, as you can tell, just popped the cork off. Haven't tasted it yet, just poured it. Um, just wanted to let it breathe for a little bit before I kind of went into the review. But when you think about Weller, you think about a couple things. It comes from the Buffalo Trace brand, right? So Buffalo Trace line of wonderful products. And William Lou Weller, the brand itself, stands for just phenomenal quality bourbon, right? Um, number one, it's a wheated bourbon. So the primary ingredient after corn is wheat, right? So obviously 51% corn. Thank you for the reminder, Chris. I think last week I said 50%, just, you know, human error. And Chris, my man, Chris from South Jersey called me out. Again, that was just all jokes aside. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you for doing that. But again, bourbon, 51% corn. And the second major ingredient for Weller is always going to be wheat, right? Okay. So when you think about Weller bourbon, what else do you have, right? And I think I've reviewed almost all these. So William Lou Weller, which comes from the antique collection, that's like the big boy. That the one comes from the antique collection. Phenomenal bourbon. Mm, gosh, I just love that bourbon. All right. You also have Weller Full Proof. Comes in 114 proof. You have CYPB, the white label. And Weller Full Proof, by the way, was the newest edition last year. All right, you have Weller 12. I reviewed Weller 12, I think it was with uh, Cousin Anita. We did a battle like the 12 year bourbons and that was one, actually that was her favorite one. Uh, link above for the video. And then last but not least, kind of where this one, this new one we're gonna review today kind of lives in between. You have Special Reserve, which is 90 proof and Antique 107, the red label, which is the 107 proof, right? So this is technically where this bad boy is supposed to live in between, right? In between these two right here, right? Kind of in between 97 proof, right? It's a single barrel, so all the bourbon comes from the barrel, from one barrel. Um, but it's supposed to live in that, that you know, that, that range, right? At 97 proof, right? And then of course, unfortunately, there's no age statement on the uh, single barrel, so we don't know the exact age of it. But I've already poured it, I'm gonna pour a little bit more just cause I'm feeling good. It's a beautiful day in the Northeast. Cut the grass, went on to the golf range, hit some balls. Actually hit really well today, I'll tell you that as well. It's hitting really well, I should have actually played, but hey, it is what it is. All right, so we have a beautiful color here. Very nice, this is like a beautiful brown, wow. Very nice. This kind of reminds me of like when the leaves change colors in the Northeast, like for fall, fall foliage, they could turn like that brown orange. That's what you have right here. So this is one of my bigger Glen Karen glasses. Uh, one of the, um, someone who watches the channel said, hey, Bourbon Judge, where'd you get this from? And I honestly forgot. Of course, this came from Mrs. Judge. She bought these from me for a while ago. I love these glasses, they're beautiful. All right, enough about the glasses. Let's get into the bourbon.
Mm. So from a nose standpoint, what's very similar with the wheat of bourbon is you have like that fruit sweetness kind of coming off like that soft fruit sweetness from the nose. You get a ton of honey, ton of fruit, almost like uh, like cherries or, or blackberries, more cherries though. You get a little bit of, uh, mm. wow, that's actually really nice. I'm glad I let this one breathe for a little bit because, wow, this is like the perfect combination of, it, it smells like everything. You have honey, caramel, cherries, the oak from the barrel. Oh gosh. I'm just like kind of in my own little world right now. I mean, this is just nice. Honestly, the nose is, is damn nice. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Okay. All that. And the only thing I missed was maybe a little bit of a little spicy, right? A little spicy on the, on the, on the end there from a nose standpoint, that could be a little bit of like pepper almost in a way. All right. So when you think about this bourbon, it's a fifty dollar bourbon. That's MSRP, and I actually paid MSRP for. It. I got it for fifty dollars. Again, relationships matter. Um, I will say there's something to be said about going to your local liquor store, the same place that you go day in day out. Like I buy all my bourbons from a couple places. Um, I, whenever I'm shopping for my wife for wine, guess where I'm going? The same places, right? People recognize relationships. They thank you for your service. And what happens is that when they get in certain bottles, such as this single barrel, which is really, really hard to find, guess who it's going to? The people who they who frequent there quite often, right? So again, shout out to my local connect. Thank you very much for uh, hooking me up. Really appreciate it. And for doing it all at MSRP. All right, enough with the smell. Let's go ahead and get into this bad boy. Mm. Very nice, okay. So I will say that the oak is definitely there in the, in the palate. The caramel, the orange, almost like that burnt orange, but it's not a ton of burnt orange, almost more like um, softer orange, um, like, um, like I guess like a softer orange finish, if you will, but not like crisp orange. The caramel, the oak, let me get a little bit more because I feel like I'm missing something. Okay, very nice. Okay, so the oak stays. It's a relatively quick finish, not a ton of ethanol, which is nice. Finish is nice. It's oak, it's caramel, it's sweet. You have that definitely like that orange. What was missing, what was there on the nose was like those cherries, but that did not transfer to the palate. That was actually different. So, Ah, I guess I have to give you a judgment. But before I do that, can't leave bourbon in a glass. Especially pretty good bourbon. Mm. All right. So, the judgment is in. You guys know I'm a fair guy. An honest guy. And I'm going to give you an honest judgment. Judgment is in. This is a split decision. So, why is it a split decision, right? The number one thing is, is it a good bourbon? Yes, it's definitely really good. It's coming from the bourbon lineup, right, of William Lou Weller. I honestly feel like, let me just go ahead and change it up a little bit. I feel as if, honestly, you know, I know uh, Weller or Eagle um, Buffalo Trace went with, uh, almost said Eagle Rare, Buffalo Trace went with a, a almost like a concept to say, you know what, let's go ahead and just kind of put something in the middle and do this, but honestly, I don't think you really need to do that. These two are both very good in their own in their own ways, right? At fifty dollars, is it a good bourbon? Yes, but is it one worth hunting? No, no, no. Did I say no? No, it's not. Um, honestly, very similar to the two of these. Take a glass, mix this, mix this, and you have this. Honestly. Um, 
a, a really good bourbon, one that I'll definitely enjoy, but it's not one worth paying over MSRP. If you find it for 50, absolutely buy it all day long. It's really, really good. The finish is what's honestly missing for me, right? That's the reason why I gave it a split decision. The finish was a little bit short. It kind of reminds me closer to the Special Reserve. It doesn't have that, mm, just je ne sais quoi about the antique. That's the difference of uh, this one versus these two, right? That's the difference, right? It's closer to the Special Reserve. It's definitely really good, but it's just missing that overall, just wow. Well, folks, as always, thank you for watching the channel. I appreciate you guys and gals. Have a great rest of your uh, Sunday. And again, uh, happy uh, holiday and happy National Bourbon Heritage Month. Take care. See you.